stress. I've been hearing a lot about how parent stress is becoming a public health concern. I try to take care of myself, but it's so hard to manage work, kids, and everything else. Ooh, amen. Why is this getting so much attention now? And what can I do to protect my mental health when it feels like everything is piling up? Great, great question. If you are unaware, the Surgeon General of the United States of America actually just put out a warning that parents' stress is becoming a public health concern, that parents are completely stressed out and that it is becoming a real problem for the parents and for the kids that those parents are raising. So yes, it is a problem. And really, there's a lot of different things that go into that. So let me kind of break down some thoughts that I have, and then I'll share with you some ways that I think that this can be addressed. First and foremost, we have to stop saying that parents are responsible for everything that their child does in every environment. All the time, I'm on the phone with schools or staff from schools, and I talk with them about how they are calling parents when there are disruptive behaviors while the disruptive behavior is going on and expecting that the parent can do some sort of magic over the phone. And that happens in all sorts of different environments, whether it's school or church or daycare or whatever it might be. These calls happen while the behavior is going on and it's just expected that a parent is going to know some magic that can just make the behavior stop over the phone. That's the expectation right now. And we have to stop believing that that's the truth. We have to stop accepting that. We have to stop saying that parents are responsible for every little thing that their child does in every environment. Yes, it is a parent's job to build up their child so that their child can have self-regulation skills and their child can function across different environments. But if they're at school and there's a problem at school, that's a problem with the school. That's a problem that the school needs to handle. And yes, a parent can be called in for part of that after the disruptive behavior has taken place. But to call and expect that a parent is going to just have something magical to say or do over a phone call or through a text message that is just going to stop all negative behaviors from happening is just, it's unacceptable. We can't put that on our parents. Parents right now are stressed out of their minds because everyone has put all responsibility back on the parent. When really, yes, again, like I said, it's a parent's job to help their child learn these skills. But if it's at school, guess what? It's the teacher's job to manage the class. And I understand. I get it. I love teachers. I have relatives who are teachers. I have relatives who have retired as teachers. And I know it's chaotic. But guess what? That's part of the job. It's part of what you got to do. And so you have to find a way to work with that child. Then after the disruptive behavior has taken place, you can follow up with the parent to talk with them so that the parent can work with the child at home. But if you are calling the parent while the disruptive behavior is going on, then it's just stressing out the parent and it's sending a message to the child that you don't know what you're doing, that you don't want to learn how to work with them, and that all it is is just trying to be punitive and trying to get them in more trouble. Stop calling and texting when the behavior is going on. Handle the behavior, work with the child, then move forward and then you can notify the parent that something happened. But if you are calling or texting, that is adding so much stress because there's nothing magical that can be done over the phone. And here's the other thing. If you call or text a parent during a disruptive behavior, then you are going to have to call or text the parent more often, not less often. Research shows that if you are calling or texting the parent during a disruptive behavior, that you will end up having to call or text 
more often, not less often, more often because it sends the message to the child that you are not the one to help them when they're dysregulated. So it causes them to be more dysregulated because they feel unsafe when they're around you. And then you're going to have to call the parent even more often. So we have created this cycle of calling and texting in the moment, thinking that it was going to make the behavior decrease over time, but it's actually increasing the behaviors over time and it's causing chaos. We have to stop saying that parents are accountable for every single little thing their child does in every single environment. That is leading to a lot of parent stress. Thank you for the preaches and amens and hearts that I'm getting. Thank you so much for that. It's not what I do it for. I do it to say the truth, but we have to stop with that. Teachers, you are capable. Principals, you are capable. Counselors, you are capable. And I know, I know it's frustrating and I know it's chaotic and I know you've got 30 other kids in the classroom. I know all of that is true, but calling or texting in the moment should not be the answer. It stresses the parent out more and it's going to cause you more stress in the future because you think it's going to make them not do it tomorrow, but it actually makes them more likely to do it again tomorrow. Follow up with the parent afterwards so that you can have a conversation about how to best support this child, but putting it on the parent to handle the situation over a phone call is an expectation that we should not be putting on anybody. Even when people call me as a professional therapist, schools, staff from schools will call me or daycares will call me or I've even had churches who have called me and staff from churches who have called me and they say, so-and-so is having a tantrum. We need you to help it stop. There's nothing even as a professional that I can do over a phone call to just make it stop. That is also going to be the best support for that child. Learn to work with that child. And if you'll just take that off the table, take off that you're just going to call or text in the moment. Just take that off the table. And what that means is you're going to have to find another way to work with them. You're going to have to figure it out. And if you take it off the table, it will be stressful. It will be chaotic. It will be wild. It will feel like you should just go back to calling or texting, but you shouldn't. Stop it. <laughs> Take it off the table and you will find other ways to work with children that are more supportive, less punitive, and the strategies that actually work. The Surgeon General is not wrong. Parents are stressed out of their minds, but it's because we have told them that they are responsible for every little choice that their child might make in any environment that their child may ever go into. That's not it. We have to stop doing that to them. There was one. That was just one part of what I wanted to say. Wow. The other part of this is that parents, parents oftentimes believe that their children are worse behaved or worse off or in more danger than children from yesteryear. And I actually do a keynote presentation on this. It's called No Bad Kids. And it's all about how misinformation has caused us to coddle kids and how misinformation has caused us to treat children like little adults. Kids are not worse behaved. As a matter of fact, by every statistical measure, children are better behaved than children even from these. Children now are committing fewer crimes. Children are using fewer drugs. Children are better behaved by all of those statistical measures except for being able to handle their emotions. And that is because we put it on their parents to handle the child's emotions rather than working with the child to help the child learn how to handle their own emotions. Also, kids are not worse off. They are not in more danger than yesteryear. Let me give you a couple statistics. As a matter of fact, crimes committed against children, abuse of all kinds, neglect are all down in high, high percentages compared to children of yesteryear. Crimes committed against children are down. And as a matter of fact, crime against uh, across our whole country is down. You probably didn't hear about this, but the FBI just released their crime in the nation's report that just came out on Monday. And in that report, 
in that report, they say that uh, violent crime is down 3% from 2022 to 2023, and murder or uh, uh, intentional manslaughter are down 12% percent a one year drop of 12 percent that is the highest one year drop of murder in over two decades children are not in more danger today i know it's all over the news i know it's all over our screens i know there's a lot of footage of these things happening but more footage of it does not mean it's happening more it just means that there are more cameras everywhere to capture these things children are not worse and they are not worse off by every statistical measure they are doing better except for being able to regulate themselves because again we're putting it on the caregivers to regulate the child rather than working with the child so that the child can learn to regulate themselves all of that is what's causing the stress for parents parents believing they are responsible for everything parents believing that kids are already worse behaved and parents believing that kids are in more danger today, all of that is causing so much stress. So let me give you a few things that you can do. Number one, it is not your job to control your child. It is your job to help your child learn to control themselves. That is your job. It is not your job to jump in and control them. It is your job to help them learn how to do that on their own. That is a process. It is not a one-time thing. There are no gimmicks. There are no tricks. There are no pills that do that for you. It's a process of helping your child see that when they feel these big emotions, they can still stay in control of themselves. That's the first thing. The other things might be a bit more complicated and might get me a lot of hate but I'm going to say him. <laughs> if here in Louisville, Kentucky, this is all I can speak for. I don't know about other school districts, but here in Louisville, Kentucky, if a school, a staff member from a school ever calls you to come and pick up your child because that child is dysregulated, having a tantrum, whatever it might be, you can ask the question, are they being suspended? If they are not being suspended, you do not go pick up that child. If they are being suspended, you have to go and pick them up. But if they are not being suspended, you do not go pick up that child. Removing a child from an environment where they are already dysregulated reinforces in their brain that they had a good reason to be dysregulated in that environment. It causes them to be more scared because they were rescued from danger. When we leave them there and they know you care about them, then they see, well, they care about me, but they left me here, so I must be okay. And they will figure out a way to stay regulated over time. It's not a one-time thing. Then work with the other caregivers for your children, but not, do not do the work for them. If they are calling you during a moment, if they are calling you during a moment of dysregulation or tantrum or something like that, then you can tell them that you would love to discuss it with them once the situation is over, but there's nothing you can do right now. So have that conversation with them and be willing to talk with them and collaborate with them and really work hard and offer strategies. Tell them things that work at home and they can tell you things that work in their environments. You can collaborate and work together, but you are not responsible for that. If they are somewhere else in the care of a professional, that's the job of the professional. Parents, you are amazing. Teachers, you are amazing. And caregivers, you are amazing. Principals, counselors, everybody who works with children, you are amazing and you can do. We have to quit taking easy, simple ways out and just going to the easiest thing that we can do so that our job gets easier rather than supporting a child to develop the skills they're going to need later in life. Yes, parents are stressed out, but I think we can work on it. We have to stop believing that kids are worse. We have to stop believing that kids are worse off. It's not true. Neither of those things is true. And then we have to stop trying to control our kids and stop demanding that other people control children 
and instead find ways to work with children so that those children can learn to control themselves. That is a soapbox. Was not, that was like 20 minutes, I think. I think I just went 20 minutes on that one question. Wow.